the Steen Roller. Steen, welcome to the show. This is my play of the day. As always, we'd appreciate it if you take a minute, smash that like button, smash those subscribe buttons to the Winners and Winers YouTube channel and the Max Wagers Network YouTube channel as well. Check out all the great shows on Max Wagers Network, including a couple featuring yours truly at uh, 2 p.m. It's just parlays as I team up with Chris King. And at 3 p.m., it's my pal Scott Reichel. As we do our show back to the window. We do them both live in real time. Talk to you guys, have a little fun, and lay out some of our best plays for that particular day. So if you get an opportunity, please stop by. Spend a little bit of your afternoon with us. And of course, we want to know what you're playing. Whatever you guys got cooked up for today, put those plays in the comment section. You get them right, you make a profit, we'll give you the shout out. You get enough of them right, and you could be the capper of the day. So without further ado, let's take a look and see how the home team did yesterday. And our play of the day was the Boston Miami under 204. And, you know, this one was pretty much sunk from uh, the first quarter. They put up at least 53 points in every quarter. Without Horford and without Smart, you thought that, uh, you know, that we probably would have a chance taking away that much offense. But here's the deal. You also take away defense. And what we've seen in the past is teams will adjust their pace accordingly, especially if they're missing a big man. And they sometimes will go a little faster. And that was kind of the case tonight as the uh, kind of a, a battle there as the uh, Miami Mar uh, Miami Mar the Miami Heat uh, kept Duncan Robinson out because of his dreadful defense. But uh, they did enough offensively. Neither team shot great, but they did shoot a lot. And the pace really, really, uh, they were able to get up and down the court in fine fashion. So that one didn't work out. We also had a play on Boston minus two as far as the premium goes. And I hope everybody was able to bail out of that one. I don't, uh, and I don't, that's one of the flaws with our system. I don't have a way to communicate with premium players during the day. So it's something we're taking a look at. Hopefully we can, uh, we can get that in place because I definitely would have advised to bail out. I played uh, Miami minus five personally uh, once the news was announced with those two out of the game. And, you know, give credit to Boston. They really only had one bad uh, the quarter and it was an awful one, but they were uh, eight points up at halftime, and then just got the brakes beat off beat off of them there in the third quarter. So uh, we did go two and two on the premium side. Beside the Boston play, we had the St. Louis and the uh, Mets over. That didn't cash, but Houston plus 100 did, and the Tampa Bay run line minus 120 cashed. We also cashed with our Marlins run line play at plus 125, making a little, uh, making a little plus money there for all those farmers. So three and three we go on the day. And we're going to lay one out for tonight. We're going to stay in the National League as we take a look at the New York Mets going up against the St. Louis Cardinals. Guys, I like the Mets' first five on the run line, laying a half at minus 130. Uh, you got Scherzer going for the Mets against Jordan Hicks for the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, it's been a very good season for Scherzer so far. Uh, 2.66 ERA, 0.91 whip. Uh, Hicks has still really struggled with making the transition from the bullpen to the starting rotation. Talked about this on a couple of different shows, and you guys know how it works. You get a flamethrower coming out of the pen that can consistently throw triple digits. You make a start them, starter out of them, they can't go max effort like that as a starter, so they have to learn how to pitch 85 90%, and a lot of guys can't make that tr uh, transition. Uh, Wade Davis uh, for the Royals, great example of somebody who was a just a lights out um, dominating closer and yet was dreadful in the starting rotation. So uh, Hicks hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been awful, uh, 5'10 ERA, 125 whips, but uh, he definitely leaves a little bit to be desired so far. He's a uh, work in progress, let's call him. He's given up two runs in uh, uh, every start. Doesn't give up a ton of home runs. He has only given up one home run in those uh, two starts. Uh, Scherzer, like I said, he's been very good. Uh, he got blasted by the Phillies, gave up uh, three homers and a shit ton of runs. But in the other games that he's that he's pitched in, the other 38 innings, he's only given up two home runs and uh, just uh, just a situation there where, you know, you guys, you're going to have bad outings. Even the great ones are going to have shit outings. But uh, um, they faced the Cardinals 
kind of uh, the same pitching matchup of 425. Uh, Scherzer gave up two hits, no runs in a seven strong innings. And most importantly, in the first five, uh, the Cardinals 0 4 and 1. They had one uh, 2 2 tie. Everything else has been a loss uh, in the first five. So Hicks, he's going to give up some runs. We're going to keep the bullpens from getting involved in this one. I think Scherzer does his job for the first five, and Hicks does what Hicks does and gives up at least a couple of runs, and that should be enough for us to cover this one. So give me the Mets first five on the run line, minus 130. At the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, you guys uh, you guys know how I did yesterday, and let's take a look and see how y'all did, shall we? I just had a... Uh, I had a late update there. And, uh, I think, yes, we have a new capper of the day. So there you go. Um, you know, on the athletics. So here you go. Okay, let's start it off. Jan Dudley goes 1 0 plus 500. He had the uh, Tampa Bay on, on the run line at minus 120. Rick Zeff goes 1 0 plus 525. Had the Braves on the money line. Very nice. Rick, Max Garcia. Uh, Max, the first two legs of a three-team parlay, he's got the Warriors going tonight. So good luck, Max. Uh, don't forget to repost that one and uh, uh, you just put the odds in there so we'll know uh, we'll know what to pay you when that parlay hits, brother. Chaco TV goes 2-0 plus 200. Zewa Carter going 1-0 uh, plus 530. He had a two-team parlay with the Yankees money line and the Avalanche on the money line. Clarence Davis, 1-1. One one. He got juiced. By the way, if you didn't hear the show today, we talked about that Avalanche team. Very good record. Very good team. They often don't win by a bunch. They're a, a terrible, terrible puck line team um, and not a great team in reg as they uh, as they win this one by uh, one goal in overtime. So just something to keep in mind as you bet the Avs going forward. Uh, Casino, good day for Casino. 1-0 plus 500 had the Marlins on the money line. 504 trader going 1 and 0 plus 700 at the uh, uh, Boston first half on the money line. Nice play there, indeed. Um, and Doug Kapar, I had it, I, I practiced this. Kanapasek, there you go. Probably wrong, but at least it came out. Uh, Doug was the, uh, what I thought was going to be the capper of the day. He got 1 and 0 plus 1040. He had a, a three teamer on the Heat, Yankees, and Avalanche. But your capper of the day, I think it's two. I think it's two here in the last week. You know him, you love him. It's Stephen the Godfather Godon. I had to wait for that A's comeback, as uh, he had a nice play there with the A's and the Marlins at plus two twenty five. That puts him at plus eleven twenty five. So Steve the Godfather Godon, you my friend are the capper of the day. Well done to you. Well done to the rest of you guys. A lot of uh, a lot of big numbers out there tonight. I'm impressed. Let's keep it going, man. We've got another basketball game tonight. A little more, uh, got a little more hockey going on. So let's, uh, yeah, let's keep the momentum going. You guys have a great hump day. We'll be back and do it again here in just a little while, 2 p.m. with Chris and 3 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Central with my pal Scott Reichel, as we will do our very best once again to guide you to the avenue of heading back to the window. You guys take care. We'll see you then.